Um, when you look at these art pieces, I mentioned to you in your classroom, they all depict the same scene, the birth of Jesus, right? It happened over 2,000 years ago. We reset the clock 20, 21, roughly years ago, and that's how we got here. All right, so when you look at this piece, this was painted in the 1400s. Okay, this is by an artist named Botticelli. Everybody say Botticelli. Get ready. Botticelli, Italian artist. Look at this one. This was by Di Lorenzo. Say Di Lorenzo. Get ready. Di Lorenzo. Di Lorenzo. Botticelli, Di Lorenzo. And this guy, Ghirlandio. Say Ghirlandio. Get ready. Ghirlandio. So we have Botticelli, Di Lorenzo, and Ghirlandio. We're all Italian artists as well as this guy, Caravaggio. Everybody say Caravaggio. Get ready. Caravaggio. Caravaggio. So these four artists were all Italian artists painting in roughly a, a similar time period, sometime between the mid-1400s uh, to the early 1600s. And all of these guys painted after Caravaggio were in the 1600s. These two artists were Spanish artists, and this artist, Lebron, was a French artist. Okay? But they were all painting the same scene as shared in Scripture over 2,000 years ago. Okay, so when you look at them, you'll see a lot of things that are similar about them. You'll see the baby Jesus, his mother and father, and either shepherds or the wise men, right? And in some of them, other groups of people, including angels and other visitors, okay? When we look at these scenes, here's what I want you to understand. This is the most important artist in our uh, display is this artist, Caravaggio. Caravaggio did something very different you could call revolutionary, right? He painted this scene different than people had been doing it for hundreds of years. And we'll talk about exactly what that is and why. And when you look at these three scenes right here, look past the baby and the people. What do you see? The great outdoors, right? They're all depicted as outdoor scenes. The manger is suggested, but they don't look like they're in it, right? But Caravaggio painted them in the manger, right? So that's a big difference. We talked about these being evenly lit the same throughout pretty much. But when you look at this, you see areas that are so dark. Like, did you see this animal back here? You see this one. There's your donkey. <laughs> but there's another animal back here. There's two of them. But it's so dark you almost can't see it. Right? And there's strong light in this picture. Where is it coming from? Point with your finger. Where do you feel like the light's coming from in this picture? See a lot of us pointing this way, right? I would say, yeah, over here probably. It looks kind of like it's coming down that angle, doesn't it? Like the light's coming in through some cracks maybe or some openings in this barn that's hitting the baby and uh, the father Joseph and one of the shepherds, right? That's kind of cool. When we talk about something being ideal, we're talking about being perfect or as good as it can get, right? If you're in uh, an ideal situation, you're in a, as good as it's going to get. If you got the ideal Christmas gift, that means you got exactly what you wanted, the best, perfect, that's it, exactly what I wanted. So when we say ideal, we're talking about things being perfect or as good as they can be. Artists before Caravaggio often painted this scene and most portraits or paintings of people as best as they could. They made them look as good as they could make them look. Perfect hair, perfect clothing, nice skin, all of that. So when you look at these people in most of these paintings back in those days, they were idealizing the scene. They were making people look as good as they could. Something that I always think is cool Artists back in these days, because uh, these art pieces would have been so important, they would have been very expensive. Remember, art supplies weren't everywhere. It's hard to gather up all the art supplies. It was hard to get artists that were skilled enough to use those supplies to create masterpieces like these. These would have been a big deal. There was no cameras back then. Remember, there was no technology in those days. So to have your portrait painting was a really cool or really big deal. Artists often would paint themselves into their pictures. They would use themselves as a model to paint the picture or their family members, people around them. We know some of them. In this picture of, uh, by Di Lorenzo, this is the artist Di Lorenzo, this guy in the yellow robe looking at you. That's the artist. He painted himself in the picture. This one is Gerlandio, this artist that's pointing down to the baby, maybe uh, pointing at himself and the baby, demonstrating that maybe this was his gift or his, you know, that he, this is his work. Or, or something like that. In Caravaggio's picture, do you see this guy with his shoulder showing? See his rough hands? See how these people look very realistic? He's got wrinkles on his forehead, his bald head, right? He was very interested in making them look real, 
right? Their clothes aren't pretty and pressed and fancy and fresh, right? They look rough. These people traveled a long way, right? But this is the artist right here, Caravaggio. That's where he painted himself into the picture. This one we know, this is Velasquez. This artist here, he used his wife actually as the model for the Mother Mary. That's actually his wife. And this guy back here is his father-in-law. That's her dad. So he painted his family members right into the picture. This one we know that these guys right here, these were actually very wealthy people that helped support De Lorenzo. They helped pay for his art, his supplies, and his travels and things. They supported uh, his artwork. So he included them in the picture. They're very influential people in his community, right? So that's kind of a neat deal. But Caravaggio thought differently. Caravaggio said, well, you know what? I'm taking the same information you got from Bible and other historical documents, and I'm recreating the scene. I see it this way. It would have looked like this, right? And honestly, the scene probably looked a lot more like this, right? So these artists were paying tribute and honor. Remember, all of these paintings would have been in a church, a cathedral, right? They would have been put up high where everybody could see it, usually behind the altar. These pieces of art would have been a big deal, right? So it makes sense that they would want to make them look really good, right? That makes sense. But this artist thought it was more important to show things as realistic as possible. And that kind of changed the way people viewed painting this scene and many other things. Notice that after Caravaggio painted, El Greco Velasquez, our Spanish artist, painted more like his style and less like those. This artist, LeBron, a French artist, also, his style looked more like this, right? And less like those. So that's pretty cool, right? One artist changed and influenced the way people were painting things forever just by introducing the idea of realism, right? So all of a sudden we're painting our scenes more realistically, less idealistically. Does everybody understand that? That's pretty cool, right?